the blood moon, which isn't really the best title because it sounds ominous and doomsaying and all that, is really what we call a total lunar eclipse, when the moon moves into the shadow of the earth. And when that happens, the red light from the sun gets bent onto the moon by the earth's atmosphere. It's very similar to what happens during a sunset. Why sunsets look red, the moon looks red there for the same reason. The red light from the sun gets bent onto the moon by the earth's atmosphere and that gives it that red glow which we can only see because the light from the sun has been blocked out by the earth's shadow. It's actually fairly common. Um, you can get up to three of them a year. Um, since the moon, since the earth is much bigger than the moon, the earth's shadow is quite large so it's fairly easy for the moon to move through it. It's different from a solar eclipse where the shadow is very small and that makes them very rare. You can have, again, multiple, quote, blood moons per year, and they are fairly actually common events. This one got a bit more attention than some of the others because it happened during what's called a supermoon, when the moon is a little bit closer to the Earth than it usually is, so it looks a little bit bigger. But the difference is so small, you really wouldn't notice it unless someone specifically pointed it out. Um, it's not the end of the world. People need to... Seeing, thinking that it is feels like it's a step backwards to all this superstition when people were afraid of comets and lunar eclipses and we need to appreciate it for the beautiful astronomical event that it is and not try to fit it into some kind of end times hysteria. Okay, so um, what they actually have found, they never actually saw liquid water. What they found are salts, what are called perchlorates, that are minerals that are formed inside water that are formed in a watery area. So what likely has happened is that on occasion Mars can get warm enough to melt some of the ice that's in it because Mars is actually covered. There's, all, there's ice all over Mars. There's little tiny ice crystals mixed in with the surface. And occasionally if it gets warm enough those ice crystals can melt temporarily and that would form a very very salty pool. Not very large, and it wouldn't last very long, but it would be liquid water on the surface, but again, very, very, very salty liquid water. But that's what they found. They found the chemical signature for these salty minerals that confirmed that at some times you get these salty pools on the surface. We, are, we always knew there was ice, but this is the first time we've had evidence that the ice will at times sometimes melt and be liquid water because getting liquid water on the surface of Mars is very tricky because it's normally too cold. When it does warm up, there's almost no atmosphere on Mars. It's very, very thin, which would mean the water should immediately boil away. But because it's so salty, that prevents the water from boiling, so you will get this liquid water on the surface at times. So this is a big step forward. This is the first time we have solid evidence that liquid water could be there. But the idea of ice being there, we've known for a long time. 